let's talk about loops. We've talked about conditional operators, logical operators. But loops gives us a whole new power when it comes to our machines. The concept of loops or looping in programming is really, really powerful. We saw that with logical operators and conditional logic, we're able to skip lines in our program so that we don't always go one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. But loops do a really interesting thing. It allows us to run lines of code over and over and over. And that's really powerful because that means we can run things thousands of times, millions of times. And this is where machines excel. Machines excel at doing small tasks over and over really, really fast, way better than humans. So loops are one of the most powerful features of programming languages. So how do we create one? Well, it's as simple as using what we call for, or in Python, we call them for loops. With this keyword for, we're able to say for, let's say item in zero to mastery, do something. So they're kind of like conditional operators. Instead of if we have for, but then we have this thing, right? Where we have item, which what is that? We, we don't really know. Well, this is a variable that we create. We can name it whatever we want. We can say I, we can say teddy bears, whatever we want. This is a variable. And a variable is created here for each item after the in. So it's saying, hey, for every item in zero to mastery, do something. And we've seen this in keyword before. And we'll dig deep into this later, but we call this an iterable. An iterable is something that is able to get looped over. So an iterable allows us to use this notation of a for something in an iterable to iterate over each item. In our case, if I print item here and I click run, Look at that, it prints each item in the iterable, which is the string zero to mastery. So every letter, it goes into every bookshelf in our machine's memory and prints each item one at a time. Now this works with strings, but we can also use lists, like one, two, three, four, five, that we've seen before. If I click run, again, this is an iterable. We're able to iterate over it and it grabs each item in the list. Let's do a set. Can we do this with a set? Well, if I click run, that works as well. What about a tuple? Let's do it with a tuple. If I click run, that works as well. That's amazing. What about a dictionary? Well, we'll get to dictionaries in a bit. So for loops allow us to iterate over anything that has a collection of items. So that in this case, we're looping one, two, three, four, five times. And you can see over here that we have the colon and then the indentation to tell Python, hey, whatever comes here, I can print item again, I can print item again. I can do it as many times as possible. As long as I have indentation, it's going to keep printing our numbers. But as soon as I open up here and print something else, well, I only get that once because it's not in the loop. So our program first runs this for one. So it's going to print one three times, then two, then three, then four, then five. And then only finally, then it goes to print. You see how we're looping over and over and over. Now, what happens if I try and print item here? And I click run. Hmm. Did you see that? Item gets printed at the very end here. I don't know if you can notice it, but you see that there's four fives. We've printed one, two, three, four, each three times, but five gets printed four times because this last print at the very end is, well, 
5. Because by the time the loop ends, item, the value of item is actually 5. Let me ask you this. Can I do something like 4, let's say x, in another list that contains strings a, b, and c? Could I do something like this? Absolutely. I can nest things in Python. And as a matter of fact, when we do conditionals in Python, like if statements, we can always nest those as well. Because in Python, it's always the indentation, right? So I can say print here item, and then also print, and you know what, let's print them one next to the other. So I'm gonna say print item and print x. If I click run, you see that we're printing 1 and A, 1 and B, 1 and C. Because item, we run line 1, so item is currently 1. So we're going to go to the next line, line 2. And we're going to say, we're going to loop over this iterable. And we're going to say, this is X. So this is going to be 1, this is going to be A. And then Python comes back to line 2 because we're still in this loop. And we're going to say, hey, what's x now? Well, we're done with a, so let's go to b. So it's going to run b. And then c. And only once this is done, does it go back out and now starts with 2, which is right here. 2a, 2b, 2c. So you can have nested loops over and over and over as well. All right, so these are loops. And right now, hmm, maybe it's not completely obvious why these may be useful. But before we get into that, I want to talk about this idea of iterable in the next video.